I'm out working on the doors again. Um, just to give some idea of the time this takes, I think I've been out here for two hours after work and I have screwed the uh, striker plates to the rear half of the car just with one screw at the moment. There's actually three that hold them so when those are finally screwed in place they'll be nice and strong and I glued in the blocks and sanded those back and what I've done is cut out a notch for the lock, uh, the lock mechanism and just to test it I put a little hole there I don't actually need that um, but just to get this to sit flush just enough to be able to test the door so that's the, the double latch um, and you can see how at the moment it goes in too far and that's by design because what I'm going to do is I wasn't happy with just attaching these via two sort of screws in those slots and it doesn't seem like a lot to hold them it should be enough because all the force of course on this is going that way when you close the door but in order to get the spacing correct and to make it a lot more secure I'm going to use some six mil uh, steel and that will actually I'm going to make a plate that goes in here it needs to have the little cutout there for the mechanism and what I can do is drill and tap the plate um, I'll drill and countersink it so I can screw it to the door so the plate will be held by probably four screws one in each corner uh, it's going to have this piece notched out which is where the mechanism that attaches to the the center part goes to to open the latch and it'll have um, threaded holes so that I can actually bolt this to it and that spacing in there it's a bit hard to do with one hand but uh, when that's in there like that the the lock mechanism does stick out a little bit, it's not flush with the door, so I will need a little bit of sort of a, a bulge there. Um, but that's it doesn't get in the way of my of my hips. I've already sort of tested that. Um, I may tape this in place and give that another try just to make sure. But uh, that will sit there like that. And then there's nothing holding it in place, of course. And then when the door closes, it'll close like that. And you can see that brings it flush. It may need a little bit of a shim, I think. Uh, if I've got this right, it should do. Um, just to bring that out. And I don't know on the originals what then stops the door rattling. So what I'm thinking is there's the flange along here probably I can just put a strip of rubber on the inside edge of that that flange some sort of weather sealing strip to give it a little bit of squishiness so that when you shut the door it squashes down so the latch just catches and then comes back just a little bit but won't rattle um, like I said I don't know what they did originally how that worked uh, if I've got my measurements correct hopefully this will have steel over it that gets wrapped around the front and over that lip. So I made this a little bit deeper to account for that one millimeter of steel. That'll bring this out a millimeter so it'll actually get closer here. Um, that flange on the back of the door should cover that. So you don't see any of this when the door's shut. It's just a nice straight line. And that's kind of where I've got to tonight. Um, like I say, it's taken me two hours to get that far. Just slowly um, sawing and chiseling that out and then filing that out to get a nice fit. I need to find my steel bar. And um, figure out uh, how I mill that little slot in it. 
what I was originally thinking was I'll just mill that cut out all the way out but what I might actually do is it, it depends how much clearance there is there isn't a lot there but what I might actually be able to do is mill that down but leave a little piece of steel there so there is still a pocket and then when I make the the little latch mechanism it just needs a little piece of hex like that and a flat bar that comes out to provide my linkage um, if I do it like that then when this is all sitting on top of the steel that linkage can't go anywhere because it'll be rubbing on the steel if that makes sense um, I can put grease on that so that'll be nice and free uh, it's not going to wear into the wood because it's metal and that keeps that all nicely contained and when you assemble the door lock that little piece will be here with the hex sticking up and it'll just be a matter of fitting the uh, the lock over it and then bolting it down to that uh, that piece of steel I think that's how I'm going to do it I suspect I have grossly over engineered this but um, it's okay it's not going to add too much weight and I think it's nice if the doors have like a solid feel to them you don't want them to be flimsy feeling or, or tinny feeling so you know you want them to close with a nice decent clunk um, if you can get a nice decent clunk from a wooden bodied car but that's pretty much where I've got to tonight um, and then I just need to do the same on the passenger door so may not have time to do that tonight that might be a job for tomorrow I was going to start on the second door and I did actually start on it uh, but then I realized I'd actually made a mistake and when I glued in the block to extend the door um, just to give me somewhere a bit more solid to anchor the, the lock mechanism to um, I'd glued the block in the wrong way round and so I had the end grain instead of going that way was going that way and I started chiseling out the wood and of course as soon as I hit the end grain um, it got a lot harder I kept going trying to be careful but in the end it just knocked a big chunk out so I ended up cutting out that piece filing it all smooth again and I've glued in a new piece epoxy in a new piece um, plenty of epoxy to take up some of the gaps um, but I'm going to need to let that set for 24 hours so I'm probably going to end up having it glued to my bench but I don't think it'll stick to the steel too well so I'll be able to pull that off so tomorrow night I will re-sand all of that um, and finish cutting that notch and doing the the second door but uh, it's coming along pretty well really nice day and I'm just taking a quick lunch break because a couple of packages arrived one my door handles for the Riley from the UK so I'll take those out to the shed in a minute and also the clock oil little tiny bottle of oil there and I have just used a toothpick I know there are proper tools for this but I don't have them there's proper little oiler kits um, actually I've got some really small hypodermic needles somewhere which probably would have worked but this worked okay um, dipping that in the oil and just letting a drop slide down into the little wells and funnily enough the, the clock was stopped when I did that as soon as I dropped some oil into one of those wells it just started working and it seems to be working pretty well now so um, I'll make sure I oil all those little jewel faces. Uh, I'm not sure if you're supposed to oil the other things. I don't think it can hurt. So I've oiled the where the, the shafts go through the brass. Um, I don't think you oil the gears. But that actually seems to be running reasonably well now. I'm going to leave it and I'll come back. After work I'll come back and see if it's still running, I guess. But... Uh, 
it was good. I was really pleased with how quickly this, this oil stuff turned up as well. Uh, that was very, very fast shipping to get to me. It was another really nice day and after work I came straight out to the shed because I'm going to be away tomorrow night and I probably won't get much done the night after when I get back home. But I wanted to progress this. I fixed the passenger door with a new piece of timber set in. Um, I have realized that my screws that go through to hold the metal strips actually go into that space. So I may have to get shorter screws. Um, that's not really a problem. There's still plenty of timber there to hold it in place, about an inch thick. Uh, you can just see my pilot holes came through. And with the passenger door done, I started making the little plates. Um, so this plate on the bottom, uh, I still haven't drilled the holes. I'm going to drill four holes in the corners, countersunk screws to screw that to the, the, um, the door timber. And um, I started off drilling and tapping them, or trying to tap them for these uh, 2BA screws, only my tap broke. Um, this is just mild steel, but it, it's kind of sticky. I don't, don't know the best way to describe it. Um, it's just a bit weird. So I ended up breaking my only 2BA tap. Um, I managed to get the remains of the tap out of the hole, which was lucky. And I could get another another tap. I'm going to have to get another tap. Um, again, that's something I'll probably have to get from overseas. I think you can get them here, but they're really expensive. So it's cheaper to get it from the UK and then just wait the three or four weeks it'll take to get here. But so I didn't get held up on this. I ended up re-tapping the holes to 3 16 Whitworth because I've got lots of those screws and they're nice dome headed screws as well. So this is one of the locks screwed onto the plate and you can see I've milled out the inside. You can see the sort of slot I milled out there. I had to do it in multiple passes um, and that will allow space for uh, the little lever which will go in there. Hopefully that's enough to, um, to clear it. I may actually mill out just a little bit extra on there. But I need 45 degrees of movement there to fully open the latch. Um, I think that'll be enough. So it'll just be a little metal arm. Um, I think I've got about two mil of space in there, two or three. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll have a little flat arm with a sort of hole in it for the linkage and I will have to machine up a little piece of hex uh, that will stick up from that bar from underneath and the lock sits down on top of that. So moving that lever moves the little lock, uh, moves the little latch mechanism. And yeah, the steel is strange. Um, and I did have an almost accident on the mill where I was milling this out and the tool grabbed. You can actually see in there, it's, it's, there's a funny little corner there. I was able to recover it. Um, you can see also where the, the uh, end mill got pulled in to the steel and it got pulled in so hard it actually moved the table on the mill as it grabbed because um, I hadn't locked it. So it pulled it in and it pulled the cutter down and it actually, it didn't stall the machine, um, but the belt started slipping. So the, the tool completely stopped, which was good because that probably saved the tool. So that was interesting. Um, I had plenty of cutting fluid. I was maybe just feeding it a bit too fast and it just caught. I'm not sure. But uh, that's where those are at. So I've run out of time for tonight, but need to drill and tap the holes in the corners and make up that little that little piece that goes are the little arms that go in there and the other thing that arrived today i think i mentioned earlier was the handles these have a square drive so what i'll have to do is make a little fixing plate up here 
and the handles will be up here somewhere so out of the way out of the way of your legs um, but easy to get to and I'll just have to figure out which way I want the linkage to go if you pull the lever to unlatch the door or push it uh, I don't know which way around they are originally since I wouldn't be able to sleep if those weren't at least the milling finished I did mill out the extra corner there and I check the angle that does give me more than enough angle um, on that latch there so in a couple of days I will be able to drill these and look at fitting them to the um, to the door and the idea is these will screw in place but I can put shims underneath them if I need to so that I can adjust the the in and out position of the lock I'm back out in the shed again uh, it's been a few days about three days I think since I've actually done anything in here which for me is a really long time but I was uh, in the city for work one night and there's kind of a lot going on at work at the moment and it's pretty tiring so on Friday um, when I was home I, I didn't feel like doing much Thursday or Friday um, Thursday when I get home from work if I've been in the city it's usually too late to do anything out here by the time I get home and have dinner and that sort of thing but I'm out there out here now uh, it's kind of the weather's a bit strange it's getting quite humid it was raining this morning but I've been working on the door locks um, and these are the little metal plates I made that the lock mechanism will attach to that screws onto there that gives me a little bit of in and out adjustment on the mechanism and there's room in here for the little arm that'll come off the lock um, this plate gets screwed into the door with just some countersunk stainless steel screws um, so that should provide a nice solid base for the lock and I did start machining up a piece of hex bar for this and then realized oh there's probably a simpler way which is just find an old allen key six mil allen key and chop that up so I went through my tool drawers and of course these are the sort of things you accumulate a lot of because tools come with them furniture comes with them you know cheap six mil allen keys aren't hard to find I, I found several of them so I just chopped a couple of them up or one of those up and what I'll do is I will make a little steel arm that comes out of here but you can sort of imagine that'll have the hex on it uh, the lock will fit down on top of it that arm will come out of here and that'll go to the linkage that goes up to the little handles that'll be further along the door and that's how you keep the the mechanism away from from your bits I guess um, because there's so little room in here you can't have a door handle there but this is what it this is how it looks on the door um, I have this shimmed out with washers at the moment but what I'll do once I figure out the exact width I need there I need about a millimeter shim and that was deliberate so I can um, I made this definitely deliberately in too far if that makes sense so that I've got room to move the lock out um, so by putting shims behind the lock I can adjust the position of the door very accurately and I think what I'll end up doing on the actual car even though I don't know how they did it originally is I'll put some weather strip type stuff on here um, you know just modern self-adhesive rubber type stuff along that edge to give me that sort of um, support for the edge of the door I guess so it doesn't rattle I don't know how they stop them rattling on the originals but with the the lock in place you can see how I've just temporarily got a an allen key in there uh, that's the good thing if anything ever goes wrong with the mechanism on the door locks you can always get a an allen key into there the trim panel is going to need a little bit of a bulge or something just to cover this just so it looks nice but that's not a big deal um, but now I have a door that actually latches That's what I mean about the the rattle um, it does do the two click thing so that's kind of 
half latched and then that's fully latched. So you can see with the shims I've got in there, oh, I was probably about a sixteenth of an inch. So that's probably almost the right sort of amount. But uh, that's very satisfying. It's taken a lot of work actually to get, get to this point. Um, to get them nice and get them solid and get them fully adjustable and get it so it works. So I'm going to do the next one and then I can start working on the little arm and the mechanism and the little bracket that will go up here for the door handle to, to hook onto and then it's just a, it'll just be a simple rod as a linkage between the two. Uh, the other thing I will do is I'll use some probably 3mm strap like this. I'll cut a couple of little tabs. They're going to go under the um, top, two off, top two bolts of the top hinge in there. And they'll just stick out a little bit there. There'll be a couple of holes. And that'll give me two places to bolt a leather strap. And the purpose of that strap... Uh, the reason I've got a piece of tape on there that was sort of simulating what I need in terms of a, a strap to, to stop the doors opening all the way, because otherwise the doors will come 180 degrees, which uh, you probably don't want. So if there's a little metal tab off here, another one off here, I can bolt the leather strap between the two. Um, and that's got a really nice solid mount, because it's it's got steel plates either side. Uh, I think I should probably actually try sitting in the car, um, which means I need to put the put the seat back back in, uh, and just make sure that there is actually room. It does work pretty well. The spring on these latches is way softer than the spring on these ones I got originally. Um, I think these ones are so strong you wouldn't actually be able to close the door by gently slamming it like that. So I'll do the the other side and then figure out what I need to work on next. fitted the, the second lock and I need a few more shims there. Um, I think it's about an eighth maybe? No, probably not that much. Um, yeah, maybe about two millimeters. Uh, and even then that wasn't enough to get it to latch so I ended up shaving a little bit off the outside of the body where this pushes up to get these to line up better and uh, that seems to have helped but this is why you, you, you can't have a, a handle here uh, is because the car is so tight I'm, I'm sort of right up against the torque tube pretty close to the torque tube which is here and the door handle is there um, so that's why you don't want the door handle down here so that that linkage will go from inside here it'll be inside the door up to here somewhere um, where it's nicely out of the way but you can get to it easily so when you want to get out you can you can actually reach the handle rather than having to reach down here but uh and that that shows how that strap will work uh that'll also be up high so it's out of the way so it works pretty well And if the door is only on the first catch, it 
won't come open, but you, you would know it's not closed. So, down there, you can see how that would cause the rattle. Um, I think I may also shim the front of the door a little bit. I can probably bring it back. Oh, again, we're talking sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. But I think that's what I'll need to do on that side. Uh, actually, I don't think I've I thought I would have to add more shims on this side. I don't think I've actually made them on this side yet. I've made them here uh, for this door. So you can see the overlap here is, is, is bigger. And I haven't looked from the outside, but that strip there, especially once it's got another sheet of metal wrapped around it, should cover the outside of this lock. So you shouldn't see that from the outside. Can't feel it. So I think that's the next thing to do, is make that shim, just to pull this door back a little bit. Um, and then start working on the actual handles part of it. Actually, I'm telling Fibs I have made the shims for the front of the door there. I thought I had. Sometimes it gets hard to remember what you've done and what you haven't. Uh, the reason it wasn't in the right place is because I hadn't put the bolts back through for the rear half of the body on the chassis. Of course I took it off to sand it and I just had it sitting there. So with the bolts lined up uh, this gap is correct and you can see how uh, the edge of the door skin will cover all of this. So that's good. I've made the, the little tabs that go under the door hinge bolts and have little holes through them to bolt a leather strap to. They just sort of, they'll fit on there under the nuts of course. And you can see how they just sort of stick out enough that you can get a, um, a strap on there and I think I've got that far enough out. Uh, maybe that it, uh, it doesn't stretch the, the leather too much. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, but because they're bolt-on, if they don't work, I can, I can come up with something else. Maybe if I... Maybe what I can do is actually bend them in a little, a little bit. Put a little, a little bend in each one. Um, to try with the tape. But the... Uh, the door closing is very satisfying still. The other thing I've been playing with, um, the sewing machine, which is in the lab at the moment, that works fine. Uh, I got the foot pedal, I've wired that up. It was very slow to start with, and I think it was just all the gummed up oil and grease in it. So I've been cleaning it with um, electrical contact cleaner, switch cleaner because it's specifically designed to get rid of the grease and it leaves it lubricated. And that made a huge difference. Uh, I don't think it's running full, full speed, but it's definitely fast enough for me and works perfectly. So that's really good. Uh, the little clock, unfortunately that doesn't work and I might film what's wrong with that in a little bit, but um, it's just worn out. One of the, one of the gears on it has play in it because the little bearings are worn out and I think what happens is it just there's just enough play that it'll get into a position where it just won't run anymore if you touch that one gear it'll start up again so I'm probably going to put it in the instrument panel anyway um, and maybe when it's on the road if, because it's a rattly bumpy car maybe that's enough to keep it going we'll see but at least it'll look it'll look good in the instrument panel there and the final thing I've been playing with is we had our range hood replaced. It was destroyed in the, um, the electrical problems we had a few weeks ago when the power lines came down. 
So they've replaced the whole unit. So I rescued the remains. The electronics were completely blown up, but the fan is fine. So I've just temporarily wired it up. Uh, this is the starter capacitor. There are three windings and three wires and it's really simple. It's basically low, medium and high speed. So I've got it wired up at the moment on the high speed. And if we plug it in, which is a bit tricky with one hand. And it actually puts out quite a bit of air. For quite a distance. So what I'll do is I will buy a three position rotary switch. So I've got the speed control and I'll put a little control box on it somewhere um, with the switch and I'm pretty sure I've got a bunch of old ducting I, hopefully I've got something that fits on there and um, how am I? and the idea with this is I want to set up a little temporary spray booth in the corner of the shed there I've got plastic sheeting I'll do what I did when I lived in Auckland I'll run a line around the pillars and across. I won't use all of that space. It'll come out here a little bit. And then I can hang up plastic sheeting. You just use clothes pegs. And I will have that fan as an extractor, which will sit under the bottom of the door. And I'll use just pieces of plywood to block off, block off either side. And that'll get me some airflow through it. So I don't suffocate myself. But... Uh, that's where we're at now. This is the electronic foot pedal um, that I got for the sewing machine. These are kind of pretty universal things. It's just basically a triac circuit in there um, that controls the speed to the motor winding. And this plug I had to get separately because it's a special shaped plug that was just off I think both of them were off AliExpress um, and I just rewired it the it came with a, a euro style plug so I have to use an adapter because I didn't have a, another suitable cable but uh, turn it on a little light comes on and then the pedal works So if you disengage the little clutch, the motor will freewheel. So the motor's fine. Um, I think the mechanism is just still a little bit gummed up. And this was the stuff I'm using to, to clean it. Um, I may have to do that multiple times, I think, to get all the old grease and oil out of there. I'm pretty sure someone had over-oiled it before because there was oil all through the bottom of it. And there shouldn't really be that much. But, uh, it's uh, fast enough for me. I'm not exactly a great sewer. So. So that's good. That wasn't too bad for fifteen dollars plus a cable, plus a pedal, plus some time. And um, with the sort of walking foot thing on it, I can sew things a little bit more tricky than my other little sewing machine. And then this is the clock. Uh, cleaned it multiple times. And I did get my special clock oil, uh, which turned up really quickly. That was good. So it has been oiled very slightly. Uh, but the problem is where 
in this gear here. I'm not sure if I can show that, but there's there's definite wiggling on it. I don't think we'll be able to see it. But as soon as you touch it, it will start up and it'll run again for a little while, but then it'll it'll stop. Uh, the time it takes for it to stop seems fairly random. I thought maybe there's a tooth with a bit of um, dirt or something on it and it gets to a certain point and it just stops, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Everything seems to be clean. Uh, the spring is definitely clean. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any rust on it. So unfortunately, that seems to be it. Just that the the little pins and the brass are worn out. Um, maybe if you're a proper watchmaker or clock maker, there's, there is a way to fix that, but I don't, I don't really know. I think it's it's beyond me. But it's still a nice looking clock. Um, I'm going to put it back together, and like I say, it'll go in the instrument panel of the car. Um, I don't really need a working clock in it necessarily, because one. I'm not going to be driving the car every day, so you're not going to be winding the clock up very frequently. So most of the time it would be stopped anyway. Uh, but I was hoping that it would at least run well enough that if you go on a trip, you can you can use the clock for the trip. But uh, that's okay. It's, it's not an essential instrument. 